Buonasera, buonasera everyone, I'm Francesca Ragno and tonight I'm here, your host for our fifth episode of The Insider News. I'm talking from a very rainy day here in Italy, as you can see probably behind me, and tonight we are ready absolutely to join with you all to, to join, to welcome with you all some very, very nice guests because today our um, episode is dedicated to the breeding program. Breeding, bre breeding program, we are going to, to fly first of all to Poland and then to go all the way to South Africa to speak with two very important breeders from South Africa. You all know that South Africa is very important in our breeding program today. Into the past years, their influence did a lot. So I'm really ready to start this episode. Remember that I'm just the host here, okay? But my guests are your guests. So send me messages, whatever question you want to ask to the guest. If you want to know something more, send me messages there. So I will take care of report your voice to my guest. And in case you will not be able to listen all our live, remember that you can always go to our Spotify Arabian Insider channel where we are creating a podcast for you that you can listen whenever you want. So I want to start today episode with a very beautiful uh, video that will introduce you the first content of the day. And this was just a little video to launch our Pride of Poland auction that will happen in August this year. And now I have Ursula with me. Ciao Ursula. Ciao Francesca, buonasera. Nice to see buonasera. you again. You look very good. Look at you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So Ursula, first of all, thank you so much uh, to be here live with me tonight uh, to talk a little bit about uh, Poland and the Polish lines, which is the thing that interests me most. And then we will go a little bit uh, on the Pride of Poland because we want to know some little highlights of this year edition. Yes, but we will leave it at the end. Yes, so... yes absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. First of all, I invited you tonight here with me because I really want to um start with you i would like you to tell me and to tell all my guests to introduce yourself and actually tell me a little bit about your story um, um i think most of the people from the community may know on, or remember me um as as a breeding advisor for some um mainly polish private breeders because we used to travel a lot uh, around the world looking at the different breeding programs and different horses and um nowadays though some of those breeders are very well known they are winning worldwide so it was it was a very exciting beginning of my story uh some of you may remember me from the show ring because i am a graduated ECAHO national level judge and halfway b international and uh, i was judging a little bit around the world in different continents and uh, i'm also working as a journalist uh, writing the stories for different raven horse magazines but currently i am working in a very very beautiful place um based on a warsaw racetrack which is one of the biggest and one of the most beautiful in europe and uh, here is the seat of uh, polish jockey club that i am working for i am working for uh, organizing department that is um, that is arranging a lot of different interesting uh, course activities and uh, for Polish Arabian Stud Book that is, uh, that is coordinating um, the breeding in general and controlling the, the, the ruling the, the breeding program of Poland as well. So, um, so this is, uh, and, and uh, one more thing that, uh, that just came to my mind, uh, because actually here in this place, in this office at, at the Polish uh, Jockey Club, it was my first footsteps in the, in the Arabian course community because I started as the assistant of the first lady of, of Polish breeding, which was uh, 
unforgettable Mrs. Isabella Zawadzka and she was working in the same office at, at Warsaw Racetrack and here I appeared as a young girl that wanted to learn about Aryan horses so I'm very very happy to work here and be back in the same office <laughs> as an yes, employee. Very, very nice, I'm sure everyone that remember uh, Miss Isabella. And my second question for you was to describe a little bit more about the Polish Jockey Club, uh, club and the Polish State Stud, as you are really involved into it, but you already did. <laughs> so uh, it's very well, nice I, to know. I can tell more. <laughs> <laughs> I always can tell more. Uh, because, because um, okay, if, uh, the Jockey Club is, of course, uh, as the name shows, is organizing and supervising the, the races in uh, in Poland, we have three race tracks, and we have the the races during uh, all the time during from spring to the autumn. We have like 190 races for purebred Arabians this year. Um, the, the shows are ba the, the 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 races are based mostly on the two race track in Wrocław and in in Warsaw. But in the summertime, it it moves to a beautiful seaside in Sopot, where we also have the the races there. In the summertime, and um, we basically have an interesting program for racing Arabian horses because it's mostly, it's basically divided into the races for race bred Arabians, but we also have the special races for the Polish bred horses only. And we started this year a very interesting program for three years old um, heritage uh, pedigree Arabians. So the Arabians without the French blood. And uh, this is the cycle uh, of, of races during the whole season. And the horses collect the points for their racing uh, career and also for their past career at the shows. And the whole program program is ending uh, in the autumn with the special show for this uh, racing uh, Arabian horses and th this will select the winner. So this program is, uh, is to promote the Arabian horse. This is brave in races, but also it was proven at the shows. So um, this is also an, an, a new idea for of Polish Jockey Club that, that, we, that we run this year. And we we really strongly uh, support the sport activity for Arabian horses. We we sponsor the Arabian Horse Sport League that is taking place in Poland. Uh, so, so the Arabian horses are starting in different sport competitions. What and is the sport league? Uh, uh, this is this is the league. Uh, this is the cycle of of the um, sport events organized by by. Um, Mr. Mr. Bogdan Maslanka, this is a private breeder and owner of the stable close to Warsaw. But in his uh, in his um, in his farm, he is organizing uh, five, if I remember well, uh, five meetings for the people who, who owe the Arabian horses and who ride them in different competitions like show jumping, like dressage, like um, hunter. And uh, and this is the cycle that will also end in the in the September, and uh, it will it will um, they will select the the winner of the whole competition, the whole this, event. This is fantastic. Also, if we look back at the history of uh, the Polish horses, just to mention one, Pinga. Yes. Um, she was a champion in the show ring, but she was also a champion in the racetrack, and this happened for so many horses that actually were so beautiful to be shown. But they also went to the racetrack, they were sport horses, and in my opinion, they were absolutely a full representation of the Arabian horse in everything that he can do. So I'm very happy to, to listen and to hear that you, you guys still have a lot, a lot, a lot of um, uh, event to promote yes, the Arabian horse. I, I think this is a very important thing nowadays because uh, we have a big overproduction on for of horses uh, globally, and of course, no, not all of them will be champions at the at the racetrack or champions at the show. So we need to to find the space and activity for for the for the Arabian horse. Uh, also, in other in other directions, uh, except of all, Arabian horses are very very nice family horses, and uh, if only they are given enough time to to learn and to be with a human 
uh, they, they are wonderful family animals and they are wonderful riding horses. And this is what we want to ac actually show to the people. For sure. And we, for sure, we saw that in history in, uh, many years ago, like uh, all what has, has been done with the Polish horses and the breeding program and how these effect, still affect the breeding line that we have today. What was built in Poland was just something outstanding in every, in every kind of uh, ways. So let's talk about horses, Ursula. Um, tell me what for you uh, makes uh, the Arabian horse, but especially the Polish Arabian horse, so unique um, in terms of, in, in the general look at it. Yeah, I, I think it is, it is closely related to, to what we just said now before, that um, the Polish, uh, the, the strong point of the Polish Arabian horse is that is, they are still bred in the, the way following the, the 200 years of tradition of, of a breeding program that was established by the first Polish old farms um, of counts and, and princes that were importing the horses to Poland. And they were actually one of the very first um, farms breeding Arabian horses in Europe at all. And um, the, currently, we do have uh, a Arabian horse breeding program that is that is controlled and run by the by the Polish Stadtbook, and it is based on on that 200 years of traditions. Of course, it was it was formed in the written form several years ago, and it is updated um, regularly. Uh, for the breeders to follow the certain rules about uh, the way of of covering uh, the the age of the horses that should that they should have to be entered to to breeding uh, the the way of the registration the way of uh, of um, ident identification of the horses um, the way of preserving the lines this is all in the Polish breeding program and this is uh, this is what is I think unique. For, for Poland that we are still do running running this program. Um, of course, um, the the main key to, to breed the Arabian horse everywhere, but basically in, in Poland, according to this breeding program, was that the Polish Arabian horse should be beautiful, but should be also uh, correctly built with the good movements. And um, this was for many years um, proven on the racetrack because in the past most of the of the Polish Arabian horses were sent to the race training and they were racing at least for one race season. Of course, it has changed a little bit due to the finances and and the, um, and the, the modern the way that, like the modern breed is, breeding is 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 uh, going. So it's it was a split a little bit between the racing line and, and show line. But uh, but actually, the Polish state stats are still um, uh, obliged to to follow this breeding program, and um, and and one of the activities that that was to preserve this breeding program uh, was was to introduce this um, this heritage races to to preserve the horse that is beautiful, but is also well conformed with the good movement, with the good health and. Um, and uh, this is actually what um, what is the main role of the state stats nowadays. So, uh, because in the past many breeding programs um, took from 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 those horses from Poland because we we can find them actually in in, in so many pedigrees of the champions worldwide, and uh, still the people are expecting state stats to breed such kind of horses. So. So yes, I think this is what what makes Poland unique. That that you we well, still have to find here the horse that is that is uh, beautiful, but it's also with the good form formation, with the good legs, with the good movements, and with those certain bloodlines that is also our national heritage and that we need to to preserve and continue them since two hundred years. On uh, in the, in the past, uh, and you're still doing now. And the skill that the Arabian horse, the Polish Arabian horse, was not only a pretty face but also a very well built horse, was something that always uh, promoted the, the, the Polish Arabian horses. And, the, and it's an heritage, as you say, that we still have nowadays for what has been done. So it is absolutely something to preserve. I agree with you. And, um, and, it, and it's very important to preserve these because they are all Arabian. So, 
uh, adds up for you all because what you do, it's, uh, it's very nice and uh, it's, it, it would be actually very good if all Europe and all the, the world around could actually follow up with more sport and um, more um, uh, athletic uh, vision for these Arabian horses. Now, uh, we already did some live uh, inside, their, inside their news episodes in which we are talking about actually the athleticism of the Arabian horse, so it's nice that we go back to, uh, into it uh, every time. But now, Ursula, uh, I know uh, that in Poland, of course, there are the state stud, but we have also a lot of private Polish breeders exactly. that uh, our guests might not know too much about it. Um, so can you tell me, please, uh, what do you think about the Polish private breeders, about what they are breeding and what they are following? Um... Mm, yes, actually, we have we have quite many successful Polish private breeders, especially that that the oldest Polish private private farms are actually less than thirty years old because of our of our political history in the past. The the private breed people were not allowed to to buy and and breed Arabian horses uh, in Poland. Um, so so this is just 30 years since since actually they were allowed to to buy the horses from the state stats. Okay. Um, so so I think this is a great achievement that we have they, they, we, that we have uh, world champion and titled horses like uh, Eralda from Falborek Arabians now at Al Shira that we had a Girland Bay that was bred by Mr. Bogajewicz uh, that went to Ox Arabians in Sweden like Fuerte, that that was also bred in Poland by Mr. Dobrinsky, and he he, he became uh, a Scots Day champion this year. We have uh, just uh, just uh, last weekend we had two participants from Poland in Menton, and uh, both of them were qualified to the championship with with over 92 uh, scores, and they were both bred by by private breeders. There was beautiful mare Mamma Mia bred by Tomasz Tarczynski, owned by by Naila Hayek nowadays, and um, and there was also Poker Face Kiel, the colt that is that is bred and still owned by Krikova Arabians, and uh, and he he not only won the class but he also got a bronze champion and and uh, several uh, special awards. So I think considering uh, the, the the 30 years of of breeding in in Poland by private breeders, it's it's really a lot and um oh i i need to mention of course uh the beautiful mare bogini rouge that is uh kahila shakab daughter uh, bred by by family paris in poland and she was twice a european bronze champion mare and this mare this year will be offered at pride of poland auction so um so the polish breeders are not only breeding but they are already started to share their the the, the 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 fruits of of their breeding to 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 the world with the great with the great achievements so and uh, and i think what what should be mentioned that um, what is the key of success of these people i think in my opinion but i think it's quite obvious that um, that polish private breeders okay of course they invest quite a lot of money in this breeding and they they are free to use any stallion that they, they can get a breeding of. So they breed to the modern stallions of from from worldwide, but all of them based on uh, on the Polish mares. So they, they achieved they, they got the Polish mares to the to start their breeding program and they added the modern uh, show stallions and this is the result that we can see even the last weekend in Menton, what, what can be done from, from this combination. So, so Absolutely. I think that this is, uh, this is the very... The Polish horses are, are still very important in our breeding program and what can be done, uh, of course, breeding them with the right stallion in the right way. Exactly. Exactly. Uh... And, uh... <laughs> uh, I have someone ask from Kuwait that just okay. sent me a message for you. Uh, the, and, and says the picture of the horse behind you, Ursula. Does it belong oh. to the world dancer? <laughs> oh, this is actually this is one of the of the old 19th century um, paintings that that belongs to Polish Jockey Club. We have around 200 of uh, this kind of of original paintings, very very old ones. Wow. So um, I. 
this is actually the winner of uh, Doncaster Great Sun Leger 1852. Wow. <laughs> I just wow. so um, yeah, this is the old, very old uh, English um, English painting, English graphic, and uh, we have we have many of them uh, collected in through the years in Polish Jockey Club. So um, whenever our guests from Kuwait or from anywhere would like to visit Poland, uh, we are he's very welcome to to visit Warsaw Jockey Club, Warsaw Racetrack and the Jockey Club. And uh, the, the paintings are available now uh, in the corridors in our offices. So we have a kind of very nice gallery that can be seen and uh, it's it's to the public. Very nice, and this was a very nice question. Thank you for from home. <laughs> exactly. I have the help from home, you know. <laughs> okay, Ursula, would you like to add something more about the upcoming uh, auction, the of course Pride of Poland and Summer Sale? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, so of course, of course, the the main organizer and the and the hosts of the events are the stage studs. And um, I, I would like to, to say to the world that if whatever gossips uh, you may hear that the, the Polish uh, horses are in the fall of the breeding in Poland, it is certainly not true. We, have, uh, we, have, we do have great horses, we have beautiful horses, and we do continue the, the precious bloodlines. And uh, this is what we are going to share also during this Pride of Poland auction this year. And uh, Polish state stats nowadays are um, coming a little bit more back to the world. They need to still uh, work on the international promotion, but it doesn't mean that they don't have great horses. Uh, for example, uh, I would like to, sh to say something interesting for about uh, Janow Podlaski stat because uh, now they are making um, uh, three parts of documentary movie about uh, the history of the farm. But they are also working to uh, to start the three days eventing on Arabian horses and uh, cross country on Arabian horses. They have the facility at Janów Podlaski Stad and they are working to to start it. And uh, if you visit Poland this year, um, Michalów Stad is having his its uh, 70 years of anniversary this year. So there will be a big celebration uh, in September, middle of September. And uh, uh, Mikharov will probably show uh, the foal number 4,000 that was born this year in, in Mikharov. So they have, like, they have bred uh, 4,000 Arabian horses during the, <laughs> during the years. And, uh, and they are also preparing 30 horses for, for the two upcoming uh, shows in Poland this weekend at the new show in in Tarnów and, uh, and for the nationals. So they are doing uh, very active now, except of, of course, organizing uh, Pride of Poland. So coming to the Pride of Poland auction, uh, we do have already the preliminary list of the horses at our website, uh, which is prideofpoland.eu. Uh, but uh, we are going to update this list uh, in the very few coming days during the weekend or, or beginning of next, next week uh, with the pictures of the horses and with their descriptions, with their career. And the so, uh, <laughs> so I think it will be very, very, something very interesting. We have very, very nice horses this year. Uh, of course, we have classic offer from Poland. So we have extern daughters. Um, we have full sister to Morion. Um, we have full sister to Poganinka. We have uh, half siblings of Equator and of Fuerte, wow. and we have daughter of we have also daughter of Pinga that you mentioned uh, at the beginning of our life. So um, so this will be for the pure Pol for the Polish horse lines lovers. But on the other hand, we will also have two Shanghai daughters uh, from amazing Polish dam lines. We will have Emerald J daughter. And of course, we have two very handsome stallions, champion stallions offered this year. One from Michalov, which is uh, which is Perum, and the other one is from Janów Podlaski, which is uh, Paris. That had a very nice competition at the last uh, World Championships in Paris. So, um, and they look really, really good. Uh, so I'm 
sure that the clients would not be disappointed with this year offer and um, and in july of course we are going to start presenting the very beautiful uh, videos uh, made by arabian insider so <laughs> it will it will be something absolutely beautiful Thank so, you so much. Much, so I think what you said, it's, uh, it's enough to let people understand that the Pride of Poland and Summer Sale uh, uh, this year is going to be something, uh, again, very good. So we wait you all there. We will be at the auction as well. Uh, and uh, thank you so much uh, for being with me. Of course, uh, there is so much to say about Poland. Uh, it's a <laughs> chapter. Uh, it has a, a history that it would take only two days uh, to, to really talk about the history of Poland. Exactly. And thank you organize another insider news just to talk about the day history of all the state stud and uh, when the horses were saved by the, the war and, uh, and all these yes and, and, and especially I think we can already mention that that uh, that uh, we are together with Arabian insider realizing a very nice movie uh, that will be presented before Pride of Poland auction telling and showing a little bit of history of, of Polish breeding the famous horses and uh, famous sales and famous happening famous people from from poland so i think everyone should stay tuned with uh, with with the you arabian insider and with us and uh, whenever anyone would have a question about polish horses uh, don't hesitate to contact me to contact us and uh, at the so, Jockey Club in... are connected with us. If you have questions about uh, uh, the Polish state stud, private breeders, or the Pride of Poland or the Summer Sale, don't hesitate to contact Pride of Poland on Instagram, a Revin Insider, or Ursula, Ursula, Ursula personally. She will Thank be very you. happy to talk to you all. Of course. Now, I have to say bye because uh, I have to go on with the live. But uh, thank you so, so much for your time. We spent 26 beautiful minutes talking uh, to each other about Poland. And uh, I hope this year it will be a success. And I also hope we will manage to, to do more new insider news, more live about uh, the Polish situation, about the history of Poland, and also inviting all the Polish horse lovers that we have around the world or that were part of uh, the, the history of Poland. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Greetings from Poland. <laughs> Ciao Ursula, you can listen next now. Thank Ciao. you so much. So this was a little um, a little interview with uh, um, with Ursula. Sorry, I was reading the messages from Kuwait, eh, the bloodline from the world champion, Mr. Prospector, and he's called the Hold Stallion. He was my son, thirty years. That's very good. Uh, guys, there is so much to say about Poland, about the Polish history, about who was uh, of course in Poland for so many years and did such a great job there and what the future of Poland will be. But of course uh, now today we cannot talk only about that so maybe in the future we will manage to have more about it. If you're interested text us because we know in this way if you really want to hear about that or not. But now from Poland and stay tuned for all the videos, the promotion, it will come of course from Poland, we fly all the way to South Africa. Why? Because we want to talk with two very interesting breeders. We will start with Sky Ro Arabians. They are small but big breeder in, uh, in South Africa. Why I say small but big? It's because they decided to have a small breeding program that can breed excellence. So they don't want to have so many horses, but just a small group really selected to try to breed the perfect horse. Uh, Dean Regis Biz uh, with us tonight. Uh, Skyro Arabian started actually in 2014 with Arabian horses and during the year they bred something very nice and actually uh, uh, became also a reference point for a lot of other breeders from, uh, from uh, South Africa. Probably I say it's South America, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's South Africa, not South America. So, um, but this is Franchi. I'm ready to invite Skyro Arabian Center with us. I'm sorry for the mistake, it's South Africa. This is our first breeder. Skyro Hello. Arabian is connecting with us. One, two, three, here he is. Yes. What is it? Hi, Francesca. Yeah, how, are how are you? Very good. Very good. 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 It's raining very heavily here. It doesn't That's seem good. June, but... 
Ah, it's all, it's all, better it's to have the water than not to have water, so it's fine. <laughs> don't complain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I complaining. started, first of all, thank you to be here with us tonight, uh, presenting Sky Vibrations. I tried to give a little explanation of, yes. uh, of to all our guests, but yeah, uh, of yeah. course my first question to you is please introduce yourself. Yeah, so I mean, my name is Dean Rees Gibbs and I'm representing Sky Real Arabians. And you know, it's a family stud, so that's Sky Real Arabians stud. And then I started my own venture with Sky Real Arabian Center, trying to involve others and collaborate with other breeders here within South Africa. So, yeah, it's just been a, you know, a bit of everything. But our main focus is our home stud, our family stud, and trying to create so something special. It's there. a family passion. Your passion for the Arabian horses comes from your, for, from your family, correct? Yes, well, me and my father share the same passion. Uh, either unfortunately or fortunately, but yeah, we have the same sort of uh, dedication and commitment to horses in general. And I started with uh, Arabian horses myself. Yeah, through like I was doing endurance races and they mostly use the, the Arabian breed. So then I fell in love with, with the Arabian breed and that's how we got involved. Well, tell me about so. it. I, I breed Arabian as well with my father and I got it from my father and it's uh, yeah. saying, let's, let's see if it's yeah. good or not, but we love it. So what to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, of course. It, it's in the it's in the genes, eh? Can be exactly, genetic, genetic exactly. Thing, so, Tell me yeah. more also about the situation of Arabian horses in South Africa. How is it? You have a lot of breeders. Uh, it's very popular. Can you tell me more about it? I would say you have you know you have quite a tight knit community. Um, not a lot of breeders, so it's it's not too extensive. But you have a, a lot of passionate breeders that love the breed and they like to continue breeding. I mean, a lot of breeders do breed for more, you know, of a functional horse, performance horse, riding horses. So this is where like studs like myself, there's only a select few that want to change and breed, you know, show quality horses. So yeah, there's a lot of riding Arabians and there's a lot of performance classes, you know, English pleasure, hunter pleasure and endurance. But uh, for show quality, okay. there's not okay. a lot. And what type of horses are you breeding? You are selecting only show horses or you also breed for performances? So how we started was, you know, more for performance. Um, but we've obviously ventured into show quality. And that's where, you know, our, our main focus is at the moment is show quality. That's what we've decided on. So, but, you know, incorporating the two styles has been quite beneficial. So, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you have some yeah. good legs and, and good yeah. movement and good bodies. <laughs> yeah, we, we love the bodies. The and tell me, about, the, yeah. so, tell me more about your breeding legs, program. Yeah. Which are the lines that you actually selected if you, um, for your breeding program to, to start uh, breeding for show? Yeah, so I mean, we've been breeding for about 10 years. I mean, we've had horses before, but just for riding and all these, you know, leisure aspects. But we've been breeding for about 10 years. I mean, I used to like work on thoroughbred racehorse studs. So that's where I grew a passion for breeding. And then when we started with, with Arabians, we started with more Spanish style, you know, classic type horses. But it was a solid foundation for us. And then we kind of, you know, developed from there. And I would say the Spanish, you know, foundation was good. And we stick to this. We love Spanish style and uh, classic type horses. But we've incorporated a lot of like Egyptian now with Baraj AA that we've imported from Ariella, from Israel. And um, we like the type. We like the style. And I think this combination, you know, it works when you, when you obviously make the right choices and you select the right mares for the stallion. And it's, uh, yeah, so Spanish Egyptian is more our sort of strains and our lines that we... We gravitate so I, towards, I would say. My, With some outside, I mean, we do, use, we do use a lot of like other lines outside stallions as outcrosses, but I would say foundation. This was my next, next question because I searched a bit about you and I know that yeah. you are a lover of outcross. Uh, can you yeah. tell me why? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we call, yeah, so we, I call it as an outcross because, uh, you know, I know a lot of studs that like to breed the same thing sticking to the same, you know, sort of pedigrees, like line breeding. Um, and of course, if you like a certain style, this is good. But my focus is to, you know, cross out to something different. Uh, it depends what you want to fix or what you want to change. Um, I think you need to incorporate something different to, you know, obviously get that as an end result. 
Um, so I just say outcross, you know, just different pedigrees, different styles and types, and to incorporate that into your program to make a change you know, for the easier. better. Tell me, yeah. which is the horse that you are most proud about that you bred? This year, I mean, it's yeah, it's been quite a, a mix. We've, we've included quite a, a lot of different mares in our program. Um, within the last two years, I would say, because we brought Baraj in and we put him onto some of our a select few few mares of ours, and we bred some very nice fillies out of them. And what we did was, you know, we, we bred our first straight Egyptian filly. We, we leased a mare from a local breeder, a mare by MD Al Shakel, uh, Al Maram daughter. So this uh, nicks with the Lahi pedigree going to Imperial Indal. So we were very happy with that. And then we also incorporated an upper Quebec daughter. Um, you know, upper Quebec, you know, the, the, the dam line goes to Alpha Fecto, so also Spanish. And, and we also included her Ibn Farid daughter. And they bred two beautiful fillies for us. And we also have a small uh, breeding program in, in Europe. Um, so we've got, got our straight Egyptian mare that side, an Alayel daughter. And uh, we just recently got an Ajman Monikioni daughter that came across from the UK. So, yeah, we haven't really um, revealed anything about her. It's been quite a process getting over the border and, and exporting so and import and everything. You have quite, in, uh, quite in Europe, so. are you thinking to show them or you keep them only for breeding? Only for breeding. So it's like we just set up a small breeding program that side because we have the stallions available to us and we'll keep them there for now and then maybe they'll come back when when we decide they need to come home we, we yeah we're also expanding things on the farm and developing our facility so yeah we, and tell we'll me see about the, uh, sure. your motto you know i know you have a motto at the farm and that you prefer quality rather than quantity tell me something about oh yeah yeah so we, we don't want to breed you know a lot of horses um we want to be very selective and we want to choose, you know, certain combinations that we feel that will work. So we keep our numbers down. Um, and, you know, we, the whole point of breeding is to better the, the future generation and to better the quality of the horse. So we don't want to just multiply. Um, we, we want to breed something that is, you know, going to have longevity and add and impact, you know, the industry as a whole um, and add to what we're all trying to create as a beautiful, you know, functional horse. So, yeah, a lot of research and a lot of, you know, effort goes into our combinations and, you know, how we breed and who we That's breed great. and what. You told me that before that you are yeah. um, actually uh, making the facility a little bit bigger and improving it. Uh, and as you told us at the beginning, yes, you breed horses, but you are also developing a training facility for other breeders in uh, South Africa. So can you tell me more about this? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I'm quite a young breeder myself. So while breeding with the family, I've opened, you know, my doors and I've uh, incorporated other studs to use my services and I've been involved with other breeders, helping them. And I've grown a lot doing it myself. So we do everything, you know, ourselves on my farm and then through learning and, you know, trial and error and experience, I'm able to assist other breeders uh, as much as I can, as much as possible. Because um, we're quite limited, you know, down south here in South Africa, we're quite limited to, we don't have the trainers you know, we don't have the certain expertise that you, you will find in like the US or Europe or the Middle East. So, yeah, I just that was something that I took 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 onto myself. And yeah, it's been it's been good. It's been great. It's fun. You know, you also meet people and you enjoy everything together. The same passion, like minded amazing. people. Amazing. So, this is so yeah. nice. How old are you? Can I ask yeah. you? Oh, that's great. I'm 30. <laughs> We're the same age as well. I feel yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's very, very, very nice. Uh, applause to you because yeah. uh, we need the young breeder, we need Thanks. the young people that uh, actually take, you know, the chance to do something for this business. So, yeah, any young breeder in South Africa? Yeah, no? yeah. Not a lot as well. There's a lot of family farms, I would say, because a lot of the farmers have horses, you know, because they use them on their farms um, with their sheep or cattle or livestock. And the, the kids will generally, you know, also gravitate towards the riding horses. But to breed, you know, a certain type and quality, I don't, there's not a lot of youth, you know, striving for that. Um, you have to be super dedicated. I mean, I'm sure you know, and it's, it's not, it's, it's quite tough. It's not so easy um, to achieve the results that everyone wants to achieve. But um, yeah, there's, there's not 
too many young readers such as myself in South Africa. But a lot of young people riding yeah, and enjoying it. But that's already people. something because, of course, to breed and to take care of a farm, it's a massive job. And we know that it's a daily cost yeah. of job. You, you, it's very difficult to live and so hard. But at least we have a lot of young people that uh, yeah, like yeah. to ride Ar Arabian horses. This is already solved or something, something interesting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of young, you know, youth involved in like show jumping and dressage and you know, riding disciplines, I would say, more than breeding Arabian horses. Well, you know, that, that's, that's something, as far as it's horses, it's fine. So I want to thank you so yeah, much yeah. for being here with us tonight. It's very, very interesting to, to be able to talk to you and to know something more about the South African breeders and your, yeah. um, your farm, your training center. And yeah. Thank you very much. No, it's for really my us. pleasure. You if you have uh, some promotional, uh, like some pictures or some videos or whatever, if you just want to take a little video yeah. with your phone, please send it to, to me so that uh, we can share the next day something more okay. about your farm and we can make people discover more about Skyro Perfect. Radius. Okay. We will do so. Thank, thank you, you so Jessica. much. I wish you a very thank good very uh, evening and thank you for your time. Yes, you too. That's beautiful. Thank ciao, you. Ciao. Ciao. So this was a little island from Sky Row Arabians from South Africa. Very young breeder, 30 years old, and beside the family passion, he already started a training center um, to help all the other breeders in South Africa. This is fantastic. But now is the time for our last guest of the day, which you all know for sure, the very well known from a world um, um, a very important farm worldwide, of course, I'm talking about Willie Brown from El Kasun Arabians. You all know that actually their breeding program really affected our breeding program nowadays. They bred some fantastic horses, one of the most important and phenomenal and unbeaten horse uh, stallion around the business, which is, of course, Ike Saliandro. So Willie Brown is going to talk to me tonight. Let's see what they write. There are some magnificent breeders in South Africa. Happy to see Dean and Revenue Insider. We are also happy that he took the time to be with us tonight. Very, very nice. It was very interesting. But now let's see, let's see, let's see if we can have Willie with us. I'm going to invite him now. And let's see if he can join. Very soon. He's already here. Fantastic. Ciao, Willie. Ciao, ciao. How are you? I'm very good. And you? All good. good. Very good. Good. Thank you for taking the time to be here with me tonight. It means so much. You have no idea. <laughs> it's a big pleasure. Eh? So, Willie, you are very well known around the business, all around the world, for all the breeders, because, of course, you did so much uh, in, for, for all our breeding program. Uh, so I am sure that a lot of people is interested to be with me uh, live with you tonight. Uh -huh. And my first question yes. starts... From, it's a personal question yeah. because I have always heard about you. We talked many times, but you know what? I don't really know your story. So can you tell me about yourself? Where do you come from? Well, I'm obviously coming from South Africa. I was born here and um, I grew up here in this valley between all the nice vineyards and everything. So, yeah, I mean, um, this is where I come from. So, and I always had a passion for horses since I was a young age. Um, not Arabian horses at first. I had saddle breeds when I was younger. And, yes. yeah, and then at uh, some stage in 1996, everything changed. I mean, um, I had a cattle farm and a sh where I farmed with cattle and sheep. And I had to start like a hobby with horses. And then I decided to have Arabian horses. And um, together with the farm and the cattle and the sheep, I started with um, breeding some, at a small scale, some Arabian horses. Yeah, and that's where it all started. So, and since then it was nonstop. So it's a, from, I think, 1998 now, until now. So yeah, quite a while. And why El Kasun Arabians? Where did the no name come from? Well, it's actually very, uh, uh, my mother actually helped me to got the name because our family farm name was Elkana. And then my mother decided, well, maybe Elkana with the sun that shines over the farm. So that's where actually the whole name came from. So it's quite a, yeah, the farm, our family farm was named Elkana. 
and then we just put the sun at the back and then we got to El Kassan. So yeah, never thought it will be like such a, such a name, eh? Well, <laughs> it is such a name and especially the EKS, it's very, very powerful. Yeah, the EKS <laughs> actually came after El Kassan because every time I needed to register a horse and I need to put El Kassan in front, I just thought it was just too long. El Kassan this, El Kassan that. So we decided to make it like a short version and then yeah, EKS came, came along. So yeah. Things come by themselves. <laughs> it's, it's the best. Exactly. <laughs> and really, tell, tell me about how did you build your breeding program? Like where did you start? Uh, how did you select your, your first lines uh, and how do you develop it? Well, it, it was quite an interesting adventure for me because um, I had a lot of like search, do research and everything. So everything started actually in America. I mean, um, the first horse that I ever exported in my life, imported to South Africa, was from America and it was from a very, very um, famous breeder, trainer by the name of Michael Byatt. Everyone knows him. So that's where it actually all started. I mean, um, I went a lot to America. I learned a lot from Michael. And, but what I did is I learned a lot, but I made it my own thing. Because, I mean, like, um, it's easy to try and be a copycat and try to breed some, somebody else's horses. But in the end of the day, I think you need to be a creator of your own breeding program. You need to have a style. You need to have a feeling about it. And if you have a style that you like and you have a feeling about it, because a lot of breeding comes from the inside of you. Like I've been my whole life a horse person. I like to ride. And the breeding side for me is a very interesting thing. And the fact that in South Africa, we're very limited. We cannot import semen. So we need to do things in a different way. So, and I mean, a couple of years ago, I decided to go and buy some stallions, import them, use them on the mares. And until now, I must say, I mean, I bred with Marwan, I bred with a lot of famous stallions in the past, but since I used the younger generation stallions, give them a chance on the mare foundation that we had, I think until now, it made a big difference in our breeding program because um, we always try to do something different. We don't want to copycat. We use a lot of info and see a lot what other people do. But at the end of the day, we try to create our own thing. So I think yeah, we're a little bit, I mean, we're far away from everything and we're very limited. You need to think out of the box how to go forward. So yeah, it's not always easy, but for now, this is what I like. So, and until now, I think our breeding program, what we did until now, um, yeah, I mean, it speaks for itself. I, I can say yeah. that, I mean, for sure. <laughs> for sure it speaks by itself, absolutely. And uh, we were talking just before with Skyro Arabians about the outcross, yeah. you know, like he likes to breed, for example, Spanish with straight Egyptian. Do you like the outcross as well? Yes, you know, I, I had a lot of American pedigrees and then we used some straight Egyptian pedigrees and, you know, outcross is a, it's like the Egyptian Spanish, it's an, it's an outcross. So we have a lot of Spanish in the pedigree, we have a lot of Egyptian in the pedigrees. But then we need, we put some modern things to those kind of pedigrees. So we also have two new stallions that we're very excited about. I know it's not um, how to say, I mean, the dam lines are very good. Um, it's non-proven stallions. Okay, the one stallion had some babies in America, but it will be interesting to see what they're going to do on the Egyptian Spanish cross, which we also have. And then also we have uh, like Alejandro daughters, we have even Paris daughters. So. It's a, it's a mixture, so yes, outcross is important, but yeah, you need to breed your mares to a stallion that can fix the problems your mares have. So it doesn't help you have a mare and you want to breed her to the world champion stallion if the world champion stallion is not going to fix the problems on the mare. So this is the kind of thing that comes from inside. You need to have an eye, you need to evaluate your own horses and maybe step out of the box and not look a lot what's going on around you, but fix, try to fix your own problems in your own stable yard. This is my, that's been my um, philosophy since I've started breeding horses is evaluate your own horses, see what they need. And if the world champion stallion is not the right stallion, then you find something else for it. So, so. Okay. And tell me, do you think that riding horses, as you told me, and I knew already before you, you love to ride, yeah. do you think riding horses also helps the breeding? 
Like if you ride your horse, you, you probably know better how to breed or not. It doesn't no, affect. No, at the end of the day, riding horses needs to be functional horses. This is the most important thing. So you can imagine for yourself, if you only breed, I mean, maybe I'm going to be hit hard now, but let's say you only breed for to have a pretty face and you don't have the rest, what are you going to do at the end of the day? It's like the market is getting so tough now that everyone is just concentrating on breeding pretty faced horses. But at the end of the day, we still need to have that functional horse size also, because if it's not pretty enough, it still needs to be rideable. So, so yeah, it's a balance. You need to keep, and everything in life is like balance. Breeding horses, breeding anything in life, you need to keep a balance between what is the extreme and the not extreme. So we need to find the, the midway. And this is why we have this philosophy is to, to try and breed functional horses that if they are not pretty enough, they can still do riding classes, they can still do endurance because in South Africa, the South African horses that are bred here are actually doing quite a good job in the Middle East as endurance horses. So, so that's the kind of thing that you need to, to keep in mind is just not breed for a pretty face, but also try to breed a functional horse. Of course. And I have another question um, that just came in my mind, actually. Uh, nowadays, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of people in the business, they don't want uh, uh, to buy or to have mares that are older than 10 years old. Do you agree? Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of thing, but I think it depends on how your breeding program works. Because some mares can produce at four years old a superstar. Some mares can breed a superstar at eight, nine years old. It's all about the right nick or the combination you put to the mare. So you can imagine if you start to breed your mare at four years old and you breed her to the wrong stallion, then you will not breed anything. So if you start and you breed her to the right stallion at four years old, you can have something spectacular. So it depends on if the mare, the lifespan of a mare, it's long. It's only to find the right combination to this mare to make her a super producer and a good producer and or not. And do you think a mare like 13 or 14 years old, she can still produce something nice or it's too old already? Well, I bought a mare, a locally mare, she was 12 years old. And the first baby I bred out of her was the best baby she ever bred. So it's, and I keep her in my breeding program now. So it's a, it's a thing that you need to try, but you know, as I said, it's all about the combination. It's not about the age, it's all about the genetics. If you put the wrong genetics to this mare, for sure it will be our job to, to produce something. It's like with the young mare also. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Willie, you have just so much knowledge that uh, if I could, I would stay probably here all night long, like keep asking you questions. <laughs> no, no, it's no problem. <laughs> this is amazing. So. One logistical question. You told already to us that it is uh, for sure very difficult for you in South Africa to breed in because you cannot import semen, because you are very far away. So, of course, it's more difficult than for me that I'm in Europe. Which are the other difficulties that you can face there besides the, the import-export import of the horses and semen? Well, our logistics side is very, very difficult, you know, to breed a horse in South Africa that have the potential to compete in the big shows in Europe and in the Middle East. It's our logistics side, it's very, to export the horse from South Africa in the first place, it's very expensive. And yeah, it's a thing that we've been trying to fix for many years now, but it's not easy. I mean, it's the, the, you have to have patience and you need to, to believe that it's the right horse to send there because of the expenses and stuff like this. But, yeah, logistic-wise, it's, uh, it's not easy. It's, uh, for us, it's, uh, it's yeah, it's, uh, it's, but at the end of the day, we still love what we do. So it just takes us more time. And at the end of the day, I also think it's not a, it's a benefit because we're so far away. So if people want to come and visit the farm, they need to do, they might put some effort into it. And for sure, if they put some effort in, if you put effort into anything, maybe something will happen. So, so yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree. Totally. And so, Willie, tell me, because I wrote down some questions here, your contribution to the breeding program that we have today and to the horses that we see today in the show scene and not only, of course, was massive, like huge. And of course, I want to talk at, at least about one horse that you probably know who, who this horse is. <laughs> of course, Aliandro. Yes. 
Can you tell me a little bit about your story with him? Like, you know, when it was, when you saw him, you know, when you followed him and then how was your journey, like seeing him becoming who, who he became? Well, it was, it was quite a long story. So I don't know how many times you had, but I'm going to try and do it in brief. So what happened <laughs> is I went to America and I saw the mayor in the paddock with Michael Byatt and I really liked the mayor and I asked Michael if she was for sale. He said, yes, she was for sale and she was already in full tomorrow. And so we imported her to South Africa and she had a baby on the ground and the baby was born. And um, yeah, let's see, let's say it was not special. It was nice, but not special. But the baby had a raw deal at six months, the baby died. So, and then... Um, I was really disappointed because I had a lot of faith in this mare with this combination with Marwan. And then I decided to, to breed the mare back to Marwan again. And my dad, I will never forget it, my dad told me, listen, Willie, maybe we need to use another stallion. I said, no, I'm going to use the same stallion, we're going to do the same combination. And the day Alejandro was born, I will never forget it. I was still working for my dad and he sent me to Cape Town to pick up something for him at the factory. And I told my groom, I said, if the mayor gives the baby, you phone me. And I was in Cape Town. When I arrived at the place to pick up the package, the baby Alejandro was born. So the groom, he phoned me and he said, uh, you need to come. I said, okay. So what I did is I just leave the package there and I drive all the way back home to see the baby. And it was not, was I think two hours and he was already standing up and make some noises. And I stepped into the barn and I told my dad, I think this horse has the ability to be a world champion. And he was only like six hours old. And since that day, I mean, the expectations I had from this horse was really high. But I always had this thing inside me that I think he has the potential to do it. And then I was very fortunate to get Giacomo to show him at the Nationals. And he was national champion Colt. And then... Between me and Giacomo, we decided the horse, he needs to go to Europe. And yeah, there the whole story started with Alejandro. So, was, I mean, this horse is very close to my heart. I mean, I mean, I love Farage and everything is a super horse. But this, this kind of Alejandro, he has a really special place in my heart, for sure. How did you leave his success, even if from far, even if he was not with you? But uh, how did you leave it when you... Because he is probably one of the few horses that is completely unbeaten, like nobody ever... Yes, <laughs> won. This, this, is, this is like, this is for sure like this. But, you know, I mean, yeah, it's like a once in a lifetime horse, I think. So, I mean, yeah, as I said, I always believed in this mare and I always believed in him. So, I think a lot of people, Breeders just should believe in their own breeding program and if they have a good one, just believe that he can go to the top. I think this, this is the, we have to have this mentality, I think so, yeah. Absolutely. And tell me, Willie, this was the, the major uh, success you had or like the, the moment you were more proud about your breeding program with Alejandro or with some other horses no, as well? No, Alejandro he made a big change in my... Yes, at the end of the all the horses that we exported is we try to send the best we have. The less good ones we can keep in the farm to best, but our belief in our breeding program is if we have a good one from a stallion, we want to try and get it out of the country to compete at the, all the shows because competing in the shows is the only measurement that we can have to our start is to, to see how our horses can compete with the rest of the world. So. So yeah, I mean, after Alejandro, it, he for sure made a big impact in how I think and how I, how I thought, thought I want to run the, the business and the breeding program. So yes, I mean, but there was also a lot of important people with him. I mean, I mean, like Giacomo, Ward Mimong. So it's, yeah, it's good to have all these and also Adba. I mean, it's also always good to have these people behind the horse that they believe in. So for sure. The Raven horse brings people together. I always say that because it's just the truth. Like, exactly. And the Raven so much to all of us. So it's, it's beautiful. Yes. Billy, I know that uh, as one of the news, uh, you um, remade your farm, or at least you, you improved your farm in, uh, in South Africa. Can you tell me more about this? Yeah, actually, we had, uh, we're on the farm that I was born. I mean, we had the stables there, but uh, three, four years ago, I decided to, because my dad gave me the opportunity, we had some vacant land that there was nothing. And um, like we are three children, 
and we were very fortunate to get each children. My dad decided to give a, give a piece of property. And then um, yeah, I, I took it like I, I never said no because I always had this dream to have my own horse farm and design it the way I would like it to be. So yeah, three, four years ago, we started with this project and, and yeah, now it's finished. We've been staying on the farm for one year now. And yeah, I must say, it's like, a, it's like a really like a big dream come true. So nice. Yeah. And when you find things yourself, it's like breeding. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, the whole farm we did. I mean, like I've been a farmer boy working for my dad for many years. So I like to do things my own. So we started those whole project. I mean, I was in control of the building and we were, we did all the paddocks ourselves, all the irrigation. So yeah, it was a really nice, nice trip, but hard working for two years. But um, I must say, now we've been living on the farm for one year and we're actually living together with the horses. I mean, it's there all around us. Even if we make a barbecue, we can just check to the side and you can see some of the Arabians popping their heads over the windows and the doors. So yeah, it's, a, it's like a dream come true. So, so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. I wish one day I would be able yeah, to come sure. to South Africa. Sure. You're more than welcome. <laughs> it looks amazing. Yes. Willie, now I have a, we talked about your farm. We, I went a little bit more personal. I went on the breeding program. Um, now, as I really respect you as most of the people in, the, in our world, I want to ask you something more as an advice, as a suggestion. Yeah. I want to know what you think about things. So how do you see our Arabian horse show scene uh, going? How do you see our future in that, in that, in that sense? Well, Francesca, it's a, it's a very difficult question, but I'm going to be, how you say, I'm going to be very diplomatic. I think a lot of things need to change. And change for the good, for the industry, because the things I think, and it's only my personal opinion, I mean, but... I think things are not going in the right direction. It needs to go. And I think we as breeders, as an Arabian industry, need to have a clear look at what's happening. Maybe listen to some smaller breeders, how they think about it. And, but um, in my opinion, if we don't reconsider and look at things for the future, um, I'm actually a little bit worried about how things are going. So. So yeah, I think that can be a discussion for another day, but I think, yeah, I think it's important for smaller breeders around the world to start talking about things and see if we cannot fix these things, because if we're not going to fix it, I think, yeah, I cannot see how it can go on like this. Some things needs to change. And it's not only my opinion. If you look at the shows, the amount of horses that are showing in the shows now in Europe, I mean, even judging Paris last year, I mean, the amount of horses in Paris, the amount of horses, even now I was not in Menton, but the live stream, the amount of horses entered for Menton. You know, Menton, I would always remember. And actually what was really nice today is today on my Facebook post, post 10 years ago, Alejandro was junior champion in Menton. And I can remember how many horses 10 years ago was in Menton, how tough the classes were in Menton. And if you look 10 years down the drain, we need to really take our glasses off and see what's happening. It's, it's, uh, it's not going forward. I think it's going more downwards than it's going forward. But let's leave that for another day. I think it's enough said for the moment. So let's see. I ask you because of course uh, uh, you you made some posts uh, in, in the in the past months and whatever so you are willing of course to talk and what i want to do here at the insider news is of course to share knowledge is my first thing to have nice conversation for every passionate of arabian horses but uh, it's also a, a platform that we have that connects yes. people from over the world where we have to talk about things that are not working because at the end of the day we all want to be in this passion in this business we want yeah. this to keep going so if we are like we don't we don't see the problems then the problems will eat us also, I, them. also francesca i mean in my opinion it's a lot of people involved it's a it's a big industry it's like it's it's like a it's like a big system so 
And what I've seen and I've, what I've heard in the past is everyone is talking behind the scenes. They don't want to come up front and talk about these things in, in public or, but at the end of the day, the only way to fix things in life is to talk about it. If you don't talk about it, then nothing will change. So, and this is my opinion. Eh? So only my opinion, but I think a lot of breeders opinions. So, so let's the same see. Way. Well, we, then uh, I, let's, let's make a deal. Let's organize uh, another episode of the Insider News, maybe in which we invite also some other judges uh, that are willing to speak. And uh, let's write down a list of content and a list of things that we need to talk about. And we do exactly. it. At least we talk about it. Exactly. For me, no problem. Very good. I'm very happy that you're into Super. that. <laughs> okay. Okay, Willy. Well, I, I don't know how to thank you for your presence. Really, this was one of the interviews I enjoyed most. The people uh, that are following us also wrote many uh, actually comments to thank you, to say that it was a nice interview. To, thank you very uh, much. Actually, it's always a big pleasure if we can speak about Arabian horses. Absolutely, yes. Super. Absolutely, yes. So I wish you all the best, Willy. I hope to see you very soon. And thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your knowledge with us all. Thank you. It's a Big gift. pleasure. It's really a gift. Okay. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Have a good evening. Same to you. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. ciao. So, this was a beautiful interview with Willy Brown from South Africa. I loved it. Did you? Please tell me if you loved it as much as I did. I really will keep going talking to these breeders for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours because it's, uh, it's fantastic and they can say so much for out of their experience that to me this is really a proper gift. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed as much as I did this, uh, this live. Uh, remember that you, great interview, I loved it. Grazie Nancy, I'm very happy that you liked it. So remember that you can always re-listen um, our interviews on uh, Arabian Insider Spotify channel, okay? We are creating podcasts for you also whenever you want, you're driving, blah, blah, blah. You can listen to what our guest said. Grazie, Ken Thank you so much. It was amazing. Thank you so much. Please, we need like, like this interview. We will, <laughs> Will is uh, among the best breeders around. Yes, he is, absolutely. Guys, for all of you that are following us, please, if you have content, if you have, yeah, you have guests that you would like us to invite and to be here connected with you all, because I'm just the host, I'm your voice, I put the platform, I put the promotion, I put whatever I can. But this is for you. So if you have guests you want to talk with, or you have questions, or you have content, tick, 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 connect with me, connect with the Revenue Insider, and we will be very, very happy to satisfy your um, needs and your questions, okay? So that all together we can keep loving and enjoying the Raven Horses worldwide, talk about what we like and improve this passion, okay? Thank you so much for watching. I'm Francesca Ragno from a Raven Insider, from the Insider News fifth episode. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao! <laughs>